The charges are outrageous. Some of our state's most vulnerable people neglected and abused in state licensed homes. This week, the Seattle Times exposed the lack of state regulation on the adult family home industry. Now, even the governor is asking for answers. KXLY 4's Sally Showman spoke with local adult family homes and DSHS. And Sally, what's the situation on this side of the state? Robin, here in Spokane County, there are about 180 adult family homes. Three have lost their license within the last three months because of abuse, neglect, or medication misuse. Today, I spoke with a woman who owns uh, an adult family home on the South Hill, and she says she fears all family homes will be painted with the same brush because of this investigation. I love what I do. Carol Brasington opened Candlelight Homes 14 years ago. It's absolutely a labor of love. This is the cozy, comfortable setting the state had in mind when it began licensing adult family homes as an alternative to nursing homes 20 years ago. I have never had a health and safety violation. I have never had a complaint lodged against me for um, abuse or mistreatment or neglect. So when Brasington read the appalling accounts of abuse at other adult family homes, she was horrified. It's no less offensive than um, reading about children who have, you know, been targeted by pedophiles. I mean, that level of abuse and neglect is is just incomprehensible to me. The Seattle Times uncovered cases in which patients were deprived medical treatment for weeks, strapped to chairs so they wouldn't wander off, and constrained to their beds. Some of these cases resulted in death. After looking at 15 years of inspection reports, the Times says the Department of Social and Health Services excused reports of such abuse and neglect. It kind of tugs at your heartstrings a little bit. Shirley Steiner is the regional administrator for residential care services at DSHS. She says the reports have already prompted changes. We have strong processes in place, but we can learn from some of those experiences. Right now, there's no clearinghouse to compare quality of care from a home like Brasington's to the ones profiled in the Seattle Times, but within the year, DSHS promises to publish their investigative reports for each of their homes online. Also, every resident will now be interviewed by inspectors. Brasington says she thinks the state should go even farther. We aren't required to have a certain number of employees. I think we probably should be. But she says the time sampled what she calls the worst case scenario. To say that uh, that is representative of the, of the majority I think is, is grossly unfair. I think there are many more people like me who do this out of, you know, this is absolutely a labor of love and we couldn't imagine ourselves doing anything else. Licensors check up on homes every 18 months and it's easy to call and find out if a particular home has any infractions. In fact, I called today to check on Brasington's home. Brasington says the article brings to light more than anything how important it is to do your research when selecting a home. Live on the Skydeck, Sally Showman, KXLY4 HD News.